Hello, welcome to Batman Europe, and thank you for joining us for our Spring 2024 British Railway announcements. You find me here today in the Batman Service Department, where we recently celebrated two years since the launch of our dedicated spare parts website. The repair service and technical support offered by the Batman Service Department has always been second to none, and now with this new website, a vast array of spare parts is available to all. With hundreds of orders sent out every month, the team here are always on hand and happy to help keep your cherished Batman models in tip-top condition for many years to come. If you'd like to be part of the Batman Service Department team, head to the Batman website for details of any current vacancies. Now, if you've already seen our special video with Hornby Magazine, you'll know all about the brand new Batman Branch Line double O scale Class 30 and Class 31 diesel locomotives. And you'll know that once again, Batman Europe is leading the way when it comes to innovation as we revealed our all new auto release coupling system, making these the first British outline models to feature a DCC auto uncoupler. We'll have much more on the Class 30 and Class 30 ones later, along with some more new tooling announcements. But for now, let's take a look at what's been going on over the last few months. November saw us return to the NEC Birmingham for the Worley National Model Railway Exhibition. And whilst the 2023 event was another great success, at the start of 2024, the Worley Club announced that they would no longer be holding an annual exhibition at the NEC. As long-standing sponsors of the event, Batman would like to thank the Worley Club for organising and running what has been a major showcase for our wonderful hobby. For volunteers to arrange an event on such a scale is a remarkable achievement and we look forward to supporting the Worley Club in its future endeavours. Despite the Worley news, Model Railways remain on the agenda at the NEC, thanks to a new event from Key Publishing and the team behind Hornby Magazine and Airfix Model World Magazine. Model World Live will showcase the model and hobby sector and sees model railways displayed side by side with scale models encompassing aircraft, military, maritime, automotive and figure modelling with layouts, displays and trade support catering for all aspects of these hobbies. As sponsors of the event, Batman Europe will be displaying products from our vast portfolio. The team from MCC Hobby Centre in Hinckley will also be on hand with a special make and take area where visitors young and old can try their hand at modelling and create something to take home on the day or build a Woodland Scenics pine car to race in the pine car derbies with races taking place throughout the weekend. With an even larger version of Pete Waterman and the Rail Nuts' making tracks forming the centrepiece of the model railway layouts, this is an event not to be missed for any model and hobby enthusiast. Ahead of Model World Live, we will be in the capital at Alexandra Palace for the London Festival of Railway Modelling, another event that we are proud to sponsor. Here, the Batman Kids Zone will be the new home of the Woodland Workshop, where younger visitors can find out how fun and easy it is to create model scenery with Woodland Scenics, and create a mini diorama to take home on the day. At both events, the Kinesis Theatre will form part of the main Batman Europe stand, so come along and learn all about the revolution in DCC that is Kinesis with regular presentations being staged throughout. Before all of that, the Batman Roadshow team will be heading north of the border for Mother Rail Scotland at the end of February. Here, we will have live demonstrations of the new Kinesis DCC system, and you can see for yourself all the new models that we announced today. Alongside these larger shows, the Batman Roadshow will be out and about at many regional events during 2024, so pop over to the Batman website to see where we are heading to next. Following the successful launch of Batman's nostalgic Adventures in Plastic brand in 2021 and its range of Thunderbirds kits, at the IPMS show in November, the brand unveiled a new range of officially licensed 1 to 6 scale resin figures. The new collectible models depict characters from Jerry Anderson's classic Super Mario Nation TV shows, with the first releases portraying Troy Tempest and Phones from Stingray ahead of the 60th anniversary of the show's first airing in 1964. Available now from Batman retailers, the hand-painted figures stand approximately 12 inches tall and are supplied with a numbered certificate and display base. Hours before the Worley show, the first engineering prototypes for the all-new Batman Branch Line 00 scale Class 69 diesel locomotives were received, and the model that was displayed on the Batman stand arguably became the star of the show. 
Produced under an exclusive agreement with GBRF, we can now share more images of these prototype models and you'll see that the Class 69 will also feature our new auto-release coupling system, as unveiled first on the all-new Batman branch line Class 30 and Class 31s. Details of the first models to be released can be found in the 2024 Combine Volume Catalogue and on our website and orders can now be placed with Batman retailers. Talking of the Combine Volume, the 2024 edition is soon to be with retailers and inside you will find a copy of the Spring 2024 British Railway Announcements Catalogue. To receive every issue of the British Railway Announcements Catalogue, join the Batman Collectors Club and you will be sent every catalogue with our quarterly Batman Times magazine. There was a surprise for fans of the Underground in late 2023, when the London Transport Museum revealed an exclusive new model that it had commissioned from EFE Rail. The model depicts a London Underground 1959 tube stock train and is the first time the 1959 stock has been available in motorised form. The four car train has a silver finish portraying the vehicles which were delivered in unpainted aluminium and the set depicts a Piccadilly line train working to Heathrow. The model is in stock now and can be ordered from the London Transport Museum while stocks last. Meanwhile, EFE Road released its first all new tooling models in December and they were the Cravens RTs. And now I'm joined by Gary Boyd Hope to tell us about those models, what's going to happen with EFE Road going forwards, and to reveal our very first new items for spring 2024. Great to have you with us, Gary. Thanks very much, Richard. So last year we released our new Cravens RTs, long awaited models, I have to say. So they represent 120 of the Cravens Railway Carriage Company buses that were built for London Transport sort of post war. They only saw about seven years service, but we've represented them during their entire working careers with London Transport. So we have them in their original condition with the cream upper window surround. And we've also done them in their later condition when they were either red all over or green if they were working on the country routes. With retailers now? They are, and they are selling very well. We've sold same. out, haven't we? We have indeed. So if you want them, I'd get your orders in pretty quickly. Are we going to expect more new models from EFE Road, Gary? You can, and that's the really good news. We're currently working on a programme that should see more than 60 new buses released over the course of the next four years. They'll be announced in the British Railway announcements, just like we do with the railways. So keep watching our videos, guys, to see all the updates from EFE Road in the British Railway announcements. And they're going to be using a bit of a combination. So there's going to be some uh, old favourites from the old EFE range. We're going to be reusing some of that tooling. There's some refreshed tooling which has been modified and some brand new tooling as well. So the long awaited Volvo of Olympian Palatine, uh, we're still working on that. That's still a project, but it has moved slightly down the schedule. And the Leyland Atlantean Sea Dogs are also in progress, so we can expect those soon as well. And there could be other new tooling that we don't know about yet. Yeah, but I can possibly say anything. Yeah. <laughs> we look forward to finding out what there might be in the future. Indeed. So that's where we're going and does that mean there's a new release today? There is and I'm delighted to say it plays on the Cravens RT theme. This is the last two surviving Cravens RTs in existence today. Oh, wow. So there was 120 built originally and these two survived number RT 1431 and RT 1499. They are with the Ensign bus fleet at Purfleet and uh, some people may have seen them out on the heritage bus days that they have in London and around the surrounding area. Oh, so people can ride on the real thing and then buy the models too? They can, yeah, and they're in this presentation gift box and we work closely with Ensign Bus on them. They're very happy with them. We're very happy with them, so yeah, Great. all good. They look superb. When might we expect to see these, Gary? Uh, they should be on the way fairly soon, so within the next couple of months. Super. Well, that's everything from EFE Road today, is it? It is. Super. Let's keep going, guys, and let's see what's coming next from the Batman Collectors Club. 2024 marked 60 years since BR launched its XP64 train, a series of eight experimental coaches which showcased BR's new corporate blue and grey colour scheme, hauled by a specially livery Class 47. And we mark this anniversary with our first Batman Collectors Club Limited Edition for 2024. The Graham Farage Class 47, fresh from its sound fitted upgrade, joins the club fleet as D1733 in its XP64 livery, and this model is available now in standard and sound fitted format. For 00 scale, the TTA tank wagon has been produced in the colourful grey and orange livery of Gulf. These wagons work from Gulf's refinery at Milford Haven, distributing their products around the UK. These new models are available to Batman Collectors Club members now. Or why not join the club and start shopping for our range of limited editions and club exclusive editions straight away. 
We do have one more new Collectors Club model to share with you today, but that comes from new tooling, so we'll save that for later on, else we'll spoil the surprise. But now it's time to delve into our new models for Spring 2024, and we'll start with Scenecraft. We start our new N-scale announcements with this Pagoda, Shed and Store. Synonymous with the Great Western Railway, this duo is finished in the GWR's iconic chocolate and cream colour scheme. Alternatively, the Pagoda Shed and Store is available with salmon and cream paintwork. Next we move to the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway, and this model of Midsummer Norton Signal Box, which is also decorated in chocolate and cream. The real structure was rebuilt on its original site more than a decade ago, and a second model with green decoration depicts the building as it stands today. Sticking with signaling, and its ARP signal box is produced with a choice of blue doors and handrails, or with these details in red. For any layout set in the steam era, this eastern region water crane is ideal for those with models set in the east. Or for southern modellers, this SR water column and arm is an essential addition. For the line side, this pair of huts will add variety and interest, and somewhere for the permanent waste staff to take shelter. Finally for end scale, we move away from the railway and welcome the Wigmore farmhouse which is finished with a white porch. Or this quintessential building is available with a blue porch too. Moving to double O scale and our model of Oakworth station will be produced with green doors for the first time. Still in use today as part of the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway, this model is also available with red doors. Expanding our Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway range, we have this wooden station building in green and cream, which is complemented by this wooden canopy. The same station building and canopy pairing is also available in chocolate and cream. Our low relief models are highly popular and create excellent backdrops to many scenes. To add variety to the low relief range, we are pleased to present these stone built terraced houses, which are available with a left hand door decorated in either white or brown or with a right-hand door, which is painted either red or green. All of our scene craft models are finely detailed, handcrafted masterpieces that are ready to place on your layout or diorama straight from the box, and that goes for these new scene craft figures too. We have three new figure packs depicting civilians from the post-war era, featuring both adults and children in a variety of outfits and poses, including some with luggage, a fisherman, and a baby and pram. Our fourth new pack features hikers and dog walkers, including three dogs and a couple enjoying a picnic. Another four sets of brand new scene craft figures arrived just before Christmas, and these are available now, depicting garage staff and fitters, a set of embarking service personnel, six Edwardian passengers, including a well-dressed detective and his sidekick, and a set of steam era signalling staff. For our final scene craft models this spring, we stick with 4mm scale to introduce the Narrow Gauge Blacksmiths and Wagon Workshop. Based on the historic buildings at Boston Lodge Works on the Festinog Railway, the model is available with a choice of green or red woodwork. An obvious choice for 009 Narrow Gauge modellers, we can also think of several applications for these 4mm scale models in standard gauge settings too. We stay with 009 scale to welcome three new additions to the Batman Narrow Gauge range this spring. With the highly anticipated Bagley Drury diesel locomotives now on their way, we add three further versions to the launch selection, starting with this attractive model in lined crimson. Portraying a locomotive in industrial use is number 05587 in ICI orange and grey. These models sport an impressive specification for their diminutive size, with an X18 DCC decoder socket and NEM coupling pockets. And our third and final new model for now carries the livery of British Industrial Sands, including the quirky Camel logo. The Batman Branch Line 00 scale range has recently welcomed several new Class 20s. However, models in the original BR Green livery, suitable for the steam diesel transition era, have been an obvious omission. A new addition to the tooling suite for the all new Branch Line Class 20 depicts those locomotives fitted with tablet catchers, and our first model is finished as number D8032 in BR Green livery with Lake Crest. The model is available in standard or sound fitted format. Famously found running in pairs, we've paired D8032 with D8102, which carries the same BR Green livery but with BR roundels. And with this model, the tablet catcher is supplied separately so that you can choose to run D8102 with this part fitted or with the recess unoccupied. Again, standard and sound fitted versions are available. Moving on to somewhat larger locomotives and we welcome the peaks back to the branch line range, starting with class 44 number D2 Helvellyn in BR green with small yellow warning panels. All of our peaks are available in standard format 
or with sound fitted, and the second class 44 is number 44007 Ingleborough in BR Blue. Next, we have the class 45s, and number D49, the Manchester Regiment, sports split centre head code panels and is decorated in BR Green with small yellow ends. D25, on the other hand, is finished in a somewhat stripped back rendition of BR Green livery compared to its stable mates, with the all over green broken up only by the small yellow panels at each end below the split head code boxes. On the class 46 front, we see D138. A locomotive fitted with central head coat panels joins the fleet in BR Green livery with small yellow ends. This is joined by a later Class 46 number 46045 which has had its head coat boxes removed and sealed beam marker lights have been fitted. This model is finished in weathered BR blue. The BR Mark 1 coach has been an icon of the UK rail scene since 1951 and 2024 will see the iconic Batman Branch Line models of these vehicles return to the 00 scale range, alongside wider developments for the fleet. Today, we start with two of the most numerous types, the first of which is the Taurus Second Open, and, for the first time, each of our Mark 1 coaches will be available with the option of pre-fitted passengers, using Batman Scenecraft figures. The TSO will be available in BR Crimson and Cream livery. Two models carry BR Maroon livery, given a choice of Scottish or Eastern Region numbers. Two models also appear in BR Blue and Grey livery, with a choice of Midland or Eastern Region numbers. These run on Commonwealth bogies, as opposed to the BR1 bogies fitted to the earlier liveried models. Commonwealth bogies are also fitted to this model in BR Intercity Executive livery, as is the case for this TSO in the contemporary West Coast Railway Company colour scheme. Our second Mark 1 is the Brake Second Corridor, and again, each model is available with the option of pre-fitted passengers. First is this model in original crimson and cream livery, followed by BR Maroon, and both models run on BR1 bogies. Our final duo, for now, each run on Commonwealth bogies, and one carries BR Blue and Grey livery, alongside this model in the BR Intercity Executive colour scheme. Moving to freight stock and we welcome back the TTA tank wagon starting with this Charrington Hargreaves mobile red version which is also available with a weathered finish. Two wagons carry unbranded SO grey and both of these are weathered as well. A second weathered pair are finished in grey livery with shell BP markings. BP lubricants is the branding applied to this green liveried wagon which is also available weathered. Our final TTAs for now carry Cyber Geeky blue with one pristine and one weathered example. Adding to the TTAs are these two TEA bogey tank wagons, one of which is in debranded Jet Conoco livery, and the second in debranded Merco livery. Both have a heavily weathered finish. The OBA open wagon returns to the range with low end wagons decorated in BR Freight Brown with rail freight markings and in the maroon and gold of EWS. A third low end variant is depicted in departmental use, now classified as a ZDA bass wagon in BR Engineers Civil Link grey and yellow. Two OBAs with high ends carry the liveries of Rail Freight Red and Grey and BR Plasmore Block Freight. One final addition to the Branch Line Rolling Stock Fleet this spring is the OTA Timber Wagon, which is finished in BR Rail Freight Red and comes complete with a timber load. Well, we round up our 00 scale announcements this spring with our all new Class 30 and Class 31 locomotives. Some terrific traction to put in front of the rolling stock that we've just seen to be coming from Batman this spring. I'm joined now by David Parsons from our research and development team who will talk us through these stunning models which you may already have seen as they were unveiled in the Hornby magazine video just yesterday. Hi Dave. Hi Richard, it's nice to be back. Yeah, great to have you here, thank you very much. And what a wonderful selection of models you've brought along today. We've got a, a, a great selection here and we've been looking forward to announcing these for a very long time now. We've been a long time in development. We, we wouldn't release them until they're absolutely ready. And as you have seen from the video yesterday with the DCC auto uncoupler. Exactly, our new auto release coupling system is going to be fitted on these models if you go for the sound fitted deluxe versions and that will provide hands free uncoupling from any standard tension lock coupling by the press of a single DCC function. It's quite the feature isn't it Dave? It is for us, it's a great step forward and another sort of milestone in our, in our range. Yes. So talk us through what we've got in front of us Dave, we're starting with 10 models here. 
Well, this is our initial release of 10 models. Yes, we have the, over here we've got the Class 30 and 31 in unrefurbished form. So you've got the Class 30s original in BR green, but um, in as delivered livery. The 30 has been identified by the exhaust ports uh, due to the Merley's engine okay. being uh, parallel with the locomotive. Moving on from the Class 30s, we have the 31s in unrefurbished blue. These have the English electric engine fitted, which can be identified by the horizontal um, exhaust ports on the roof. And as you can see, um, most of our models uh, released today, we can you can order them in a choice of identities. So the, the BR Green, the Blue, the Ralph Rope Petroleum and Ralph Rope Red Stripe are available in two different running numbers um, to give you the added choice of, of which locomotive you prefer. And also, to um, they're quite often run in pairs. Exactly, yeah. So with the Petroleum locomotives often run in pairs for the heavier TEA trains. Um, so it gives you the choice to by two locomotives and run them prototypically and with all the stock we've just exactly announced. we've just released TTAs TAs, TAs recently yes um, so yeah. lots of petroleum traffic available to make up an authentic train we've got the new Mark One coaches coming through we certainly have yes very well behind yeah one Mark Ones blue and green locomotives as well obviously branch lines always produced a wide range of freight stock so the rail freight here is well covered mm. um, and for the slightly more contemporary scene the mainline blue as well certainly yes a good good selection. So take this through the refurbished locomotive, Dave, I believe these are all original as-built condition. Original as-built, yes. Obviously right. two options on the engine, yep. and then we go to the refurbished locomotives. Move on to the refurbished locomotives. Uh, first of all, we have four refurbished 31 ones, starting with the two in Ralph Wright Red Stripe, uh, which is quite an early livery for the 31 ones. Uh, so as soon as they were converted, they'd had um, the cowling removed, Body size smoothed off, so the, the, the horizontal strips removed. They came out in as new livery for the Ralph Freight Red Stripe, which is uh, a new livery for its time. A very attractive livery as well. Moving on from the Ralph Freight Red Stripe, we have the Ralph Freight Petroleum Sector liveried locomotives. Uh, these are slightly later on. They've had the grill side grills um, refurbished with a single piece grill with the vertical slats. They've had the top hat added to the fan grill, and they also have the high intensity headlight. And the well. lens of that is even ribbed, isn't it? Dave? Yes, yes. Following on some, from some of our previous releases, we've had that lens ribbed. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it looks very good. Yeah, it diffuses the light nicely. Yes. Uh, and to round off the collection, we have two 31 stroke fours, which have had the ETH equipment added uh, for passenger trains. Um, this has been prototypically cut into the front, so there's a whole new, new front built for it. Uh, and the ETH socket on the cab front has been recessed into it, which, uh, which yeah, looks very nice. Looks great. Yeah. It's a great addition. So we have a 31.4 in, in BR Blue and the lovely mainline liveried 31.4 SM. It's a real stunning lineup to start us with here, Dave. It is. There's something for everyone, I think. Covering a lot of eras, a lot of different options with freight, passenger locomotives, and of course the choice of identity on a lot of the models so people can buy two uh, and run them together without duplicating things. Yes, yeah, that'd be very good indeed. Well, it's clear to me, Dave, that these models are packed full of detail. There's a lot of work gone into them, yes. We, the, the bogies are fabulous. There's a lot of depth, a lot of detail, lots of separately fitted parts, uh, moulded in different stages to get the, the full depth of detail that we require uh, and to match the, the standards of uh, all our most recent models. Yeah, that's really up there with the best that Batman can do. It is. We're, we're very pleased with the, the body side grills as well. All have been moulded in a two stage parts and, and fitted together to get the really nice louver effects that and we wanted. Of course, the different versions for the different eras of the locomotives too that you mentioned earlier. Yes, yeah, there's lots of lots of small details that differentiate between different stages of the locomotive's lives. One, one nice thing that we picked up on was the, the original cowling on the green models. When it they moved on to BR Blue, the uh, the cowling was slightly cut away to improve access to the brake equipment on the bogies. Okay. We've modelled that as well. So the green locos have the original straight cowling and the blue standard 31s have a, a slight cut into them. And then obviously that's removed on the refurbished locomotives. That's right, yeah. The, no cowling at all on the refurbished locomotive. The smooth body sides, the top hat addition for some of the later ones, uh, the radio roof pod as well. I mean, a lot of people view our models from above because they're looking down at their layouts uh, and the roof of the locomotives is uh, really going to catch the eye as well. It certainly will. We've fitted all the handrails. Uh, we have a lovely etched grill, so you can see right through. Uh, it, it's looking really nice. Yeah, it's looking really good. 
In addition to these features, um, we've got the beautifully decorated inter cab interiors with lots of separately moulded parts and seats and all the dials picked out. Um, and will they be differently decorated depending on the livery, Dave? Yes, yeah, the, the decoration is um, era dependent or livery dependent, so you have the nice green and cream inside of the original ones, moving on to the we are sort of rail grey interiors for later on and some later warning panels in the in the privatisation era deliveries as well. Um, so they're looking really nice inside certainly and through those windows in front of them you can see we've got the etched windscreen wipers and the original models have the twin jet nozzles uh, uncovered and then later on we have them all covered up as well with the, the cover that was added later on. I know people love an accessory pack what are they going to get with their models? The accessory packs have got a full complement of pipes, ready decorated to fit. Uh, we're also glad to be including a, a three-piece snowplow that will be mounted to the chassis as well for those who want to fit it. That's great, so a lot of fun can be had for those that want to add those details to their models. As with our Class 37s and 47s released previously, every item here today will be available in three different formats. So Richard, would you like to outline what these are? Certainly Dave. So every model is going to be fitted with a five pole motor. That's got twin flywheels, providing drive to both bogies. Inside we've also got the dual fitted speaker system. We've got a Plus 22 DCC decoder socket. And we've got a suite of lighting, which includes directional lights, with the high intensity headlight where applicable to the locomotive being modelled. We've got cab lights and engine room lights which will operate when you use it on DCC. On the engine room lights you're going to be able to see the internal detail through the body side windows yes. and that includes yes. different internal detailing for either the Merleys or the English electric engines that were fitted to these locomotives. We've also got the option to turn off the lights, the directional lights at either end independently and Correct. again with DCC control you can switch between having two red tail lights or just a single red tail light. Um, so quite a, a lot to play with on the line mm. front. If you opt for one of our sound fitted models, now these are going to be fitted with a Zemo sound decoder straight out of the box and you can pop it on a DCC or analog layout and enjoy realistic sound effects straight from the box. No modifications required, just pop Excellent. it on and play. The sound projects installed in those locomotives will differ between the Class 30s with their Merleys engines and the Class 31s. And then for the ultimate experience, we obviously have our sound fitted deluxe models. If you opt for one of our sound fitted deluxe models, then you really are getting the best of the best. And this features all of the specification we've already discussed with the addition of the independently driven motorized roof fan. This is configured as part of the sound project to operate at a variable speed as per the real class 31s and then we've also got the windscreen tinting that has been so popular on class 37 yes. and 47 models with the class 31 this was only applied to the drivers and the second man's windscreens so you'll see on the model that the center smaller windscreen doesn't have that effect That's for full prototype fidelity mm. and then obviously our final feature for the sound fitted deluxe models and one we're really proud about today is the auto release coupling system and as we've already mentioned these are automatic dcc operated couplings which with the press of a single dcc function button you can release your train from your locomotive the locomotive will squeeze up to release the tension from the couplings it will then raise its own coupling and raise the opposing coupling and then pull away slightly so that the couplings don't re-engage and that is operating with any standard tension lock couplings so no modification required to your existing stock just pop a Batman branch line class 31 at the head of your train press the function button and you'll be uncoupled in no time at all that's brilliant on the class 31 Dave We've obviously got that feature fitted at both ends and you can remove it if you so wish because it's just a standard NEM coupling pocket with a small connector for the electrical components. That's right, yeah. Very easy to remove. So you can fit your detail parts as required or have the wonderful DCC operated coupling. Yeah. Totally your choice. Now I'm sure you'd love to know a bit more about the 10 models that we have in front of us today. So Dave, can you talk us through them? I certainly will. The first model to join the Branchline fleet depicts number D5564 
As built, the Brush Type 2s were fitted with Merley's engines and original locomotives were denoted Class 30 under the later TOPS classification. The presence of the Merley's engines is identifiable by the engine block detail visible through the body side windows and the engine exhaust ports on the roof. The open boiler exhaust port can also be seen on the roof, along with the body side steps and water filler hatch. The model is finished in BR green livery with two light green grey bands around the body. Our second model to carry the beautifully rich and authentic BR green livery is number D5617. And here we pay attention to the original windscreen washer jets depicted on the branch line model using four separately fitted metal wires at each end. The full, original buffer beam cowling is present and the battery boxes are of the original design without the additional safety clips that were fitted in later years. Next we have a 31 stroke one number 31123 which carries BR blue livery. Once the locomotives had their Merley's engines replaced with an English electric 12 SVT they became class 31s and again details of the English electric engine can be seen through the bodyside windows. The locomotive has communication doors on its nose ends plated over, the buffer beam cowling has been modified but not totally removed and a shield has been fitted over the windscreen washer jets. Number 31293 is another class 31 stroke one and one which has seen its boiler port and body side steps plated over. Below the sole bar battery boxes have been fitted with additional safety clips. Both of these blue 31 ones carry dominoes in their roof mounted head code boxes. Moving to refurbished machines and this model of number 31180 depicts a refurbished class 31 stroke one. As part of the refurbishment programme, locomotives lost the raised band that had previously adorned both sides and ends of the body at mid-height. The buffer beam cowling below the cabs was removed and above the cab the head code boxes had been plated over and two marker lights are fitted. A second refurbished machine depicts number 31149 and this is also our second model to carry the BR Rail Freight Red Stripe livery which is supplemented by the orange cantrail lining which separates the grey body side and roof. Next we turn to the sectors and the class 31s allocated to the petroleum sector. Again refurbished class 31 ones, we start with number 31319 which wears the triple grey colour scheme of rail freight with blue and yellow petroleum sector markings. Further modifications have been made to this locomotive with the four body side radiator grills replaced with a single unit and with the cowling fitted to the roof fan. Allocated to Immingham, the locomotive carries the Immingham depot plaque below each cab side. 31304 was also allocated to Immingham but was not fitted with the depot's plaque, unlike 31319. As can be seen, these locomotives have been fitted with high intensity headlights which are offset to the right on each cab front and NRN aerial pods have also been fitted to each cab roof. Often used in pairs, why not opt for 31319 and its stable mate 31304 and you too can have a pair of petroleum 31s. Next we welcome a 31 stroke 4, another refurbished machine, however the 31 stroke 4 subclass tells us that number 31435 is fitted with electric train heating. Unlike some classes which had the ETH fitted as standard as part of the refurbishment program, ETH was not routinely added to the 31s, but some received it for working passenger services or to preheat carriages when moving them between depots and stations. Sporting all the hallmarks of a refurbished locomotive, 31435, which is now preserved, is decorated in BR blue livery. Our final class 31 for now, and our second refurbished class 31 for, is number 31407 in mainline blue livery. The only Class 31 to receive the blue livery of the Shadow Freight Operator mainline, 31407 sports high intensity headlights which are fitted centrally at the bottom of each cab front. There's a lot going on on the top of this model, with the NRN roof pods and the fan cowling both present, alongside a full complement of roof panel handles which, in the main, are separately fitted metal wire components, a common feature across the Bankman branch line Class 30s and 31s. Well, I'm sure you'll agree that's a great selection of models to launch the all new Backman Branch Line Class 30 and 31 locomotives. Uh, Richard, we're all keen to know after all this work and all this effort how much these models are going to cost. Well, Dave, it certainly is a great selection to get started with, and all of our standard version models are going to be priced at £199.95. That's good. 
We've got the sound fitted versions, which come in at £309.95. Yeah. And for the sound fitted deluxe, which is fitted with the brand new auto release coupling yeah. system, yeah. both ends of the models, the RRP will be £359.95. And all of these models are going to be arriving with Batman retailers in the coming months. And as you know, Batman is a true supporter of independent model shops. So these models will only be available to purchase from our network of stockists. You can head to our website to find your nearest stockist now. You obviously have seen that we've got new BR Malton coaches coming for the Batman branch line range. And Dave, there's some enhancements to these models that you'd like to share with us. There is, yes. Um, as you might have seen on the um, previous photographs of the West Coast Railway coaches, and on uh, these coaches, we've, we've had put the additional option of with or without the end steps, which allows for a much more prototypical and realistic model. One thing that hasn't been seen before, or, or shown or talked about, is uh, the bogies. We've re-engineered the bogies for all of our Mark 1 coaches. So all of these new releases will become fitted with brand new Mark 1 coach bogies. So we have the BR1 bogey fitted to this example here, and the Combo Moth fitted to this example here. The standards of these bogies match the recent releases of the Bullet coaches or the Thompson coaches. They all have electrical pickups built in for anybody who wants to fit lighting to their coaches, uh, and which allows for a better running coach as well. Great, it's a nice addition to the range, Dave, obviously enhancing what we've already got, and uh, we'll see what developments we have in store for the Mark 1 coaches later in the year. You certainly will, yes. Well, is that everything for Double O today, Dave? It is for Double O, yes. Great, so now let's take a look at what we've got in store from Graham Farish this spring. This spring sees further additions to the Graham Farish range of N-scale rolling stock, and we start with further BR Mark 1 coaches. This time, the restaurant first open, which appears in BR Crimson and Cream, BR Maroon and BR Chocolate and Cream. Each of these models runs on BR1 bogies, and the same is true for the first of our Mark 1 first opens, which is also finished in Chocolate and Cream. More contemporary versions of the first open run on Commonwealth bogies, and two models carry BR Intercity Charter Executive livery, alongside a pair in West Coast Railways Maroon, named Diana and Alexandra. After the Mark 1s and the Mark 2s came the Mark 3s, and this spring sees our BR Mark 3 coaches available in three two-coach packs to depict GWR's Night Riviera sleeping train. Pack A contains a sleeping car and a brake first open, whilst Pack B contains a sleeping car and a standard open vehicle. The final pack, Pack C, features a sleeping car and a kitchen buffet first. The Mark III sleeping car will also be available individually, with two models carrying BR Blue and Grey livery with Intercity Sleeper branding. A second duo will carry BR Intercity Swallow livery. Whilst the final pair are decorated in the early Scott Rail scheme with Caledonian Sleeper branding. New wagons for Graham Farish come in the form of the HEA Hopper Wagon, which is finished in BR Bauxite livery with two rain numbers available. Some HEAs were used to carry coal, and from 1987, wagons allocated to this traffic were decorated in BR's rail freight livery with coal sector logos, as depicted by this second pair of models. Well, that's a nice selection of N-scale rolling stock, and this spring we also have two new tooling projects to unveil for Graham Farish. The first of which is our South Eastern and Chatham Railway dancehall brake van. These 25-ton brake vans were known as the dancehalls, because of their large and spacious cabins. Compare it to say the pillbox brake vans built later by the Southern Railway and you'll see that there's quite a generous space provided for the train crew in these South Eastern and Chatham Railway design vehicles. Just like their double O counterparts, these models are packed full of detail. On each side we have separately fitted metal handrails. Cabin, which is viewed from inside the veranda, is glazed and you can see straight through from one end to the other. Separately fitted running boards adorn each side of the model, whilst underneath there is a full complement of brake gear, and at each end NEM coupling pockets are fitted with standard N-scale couplings. Although built by the South Eastern Chatham Railway, one version of the dance hall brake van as depicted by this new Graham Farish model still survives today, and this can be found at the Whitwell and Reef and Railway, where we visited back in 2022 to put the 00 scale model next to its full-size counterpart. With the Graham Farish range already offering models of the South Eastern Chatham Railway C-Class locomotive and birdcage coaches, this is a lovely addition to the range for anyone modelling the South Eastern Chatham Railway, the Southern Railway, or in later years, the BR Southern Region 
and the wider network. Our initial offering covers the vans from their original SE and CR days through Southern Railway and into BR ownership. And for the Batman Collectors Club exclusive edition, we have the Crane Mess van from Stratford in London. These models will be arriving with Batman retailers this month, so let's take a look at the details of each version. Depicting the dancehalls when first entering traffic, we have these models in South Eastern and Chatham Railway grey livery, as goods break numbers 11902 and 11905. The former is now preserved and has been returned to SECR condition by the Whitwell and Reefham Railway. Moving on to Southern Railway days, and we have numbers 55462 and 55458 in SR Brown livery, complete with contrasting red ends. For the BR era are numbers S55457 and S55460 in BR grey livery. And finally, depicting two of the vans granted second lives in departmental use are numbers DS55466 and DS55464, which are both finished in the BR departmental olive green colour scheme. For our Collectors Club exclusive model, we have emulated our 00 release to portray the Crane Mess van from Stratford, London, with its distinctive olive green livery and yellow wraparound ends. I saw your twin earlier. The evil one. Yes, him. Well, I'm afraid it's only me. I'm back again because we've got something special. Why are you back, David? Well, talking of twins, we have the LMS 10,000, 10,001 in N scale by Graham Farish. Well, these are delightful, aren't they, Dave? They certainly are. They're a bit of an icon of British railways uh, and having had them for so long as part of our branch line range, we finally scaled them down to N scale and they look fabulous especially with the silver roofs, the iconic nose, um, and having carried LMS uh, in black and silver as well and into, into green and that is, is fabulous. So I know you're a bit of a fan of these, Richard. I am, yes. The twins, they're, obviously they were the pioneering diesel locomotives, the first mainline diesels built in Britain. Uh, in, conceived in 1946 as a joint venture between the LMS and English Electric, uh, with the LMS designing the body and the chassis, and English Electric providing the, the engines, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and electrical gear. And the first locomotive, 10,000, was outshopped at the end of 1947, so just before nationalisation. It allowed it to get the, uh, the large LMS lettering on there and uh, the very large numbers at each end. And uh, it carried those till 1951, remarkably, um, before it got any BR insignia. Mm -hmm. And then 10,001, uh, its twin was built during 1947-1948, came out mid-year 1948, by which time British Railways, uh, they'd taken, taken over. Out, yeah. um, so it didn't carry any LMS insignia oh. as released. Unfortunately. Um, well, yeah, <laughs> it, would it would have looked beautiful, wouldn't yeah. it, the pair together, but uh, we can only model what happens, what happens yeah, can't we? Right. Um, and then that would have got the BR insignia later on. And then the, the pair ran on the Midland Main Line, and the mm. West Coast Main Line running on um, passenger trains predominantly on their own and as a twin yes, yeah. pair of locomotives to give more, more power. Mm. And they even had the interconnecting doors, which we've got on the models, allowing crew and staff to pass between the two locomotives. Well, I think mm. that was seldom used, actually. They uh, provided more drafts than <laughs> convenient walkways. Yeah. And then 1953, the pair went to the southern region. They for, did, for yes. trials down yeah. there. The southern region were building their own mainline diesel locomotives at the time, mm. um, their own prototype, so they were able to compare the two. Um, and to do so, the southern region will obviously use the greater number of lamps on each end Extra for lamp brackets, yeah. um, route indications, well. yeah. and they appeared on the twins to make them suitable for use on the southern region. Mm. And like you say, we've got those on these models too, which yeah. is uh, a lovely touch. More faithfully replicated. Certainly is. And two years later, 1955, they went back to the Midland region for, for in on the mid the main line, west coast main line again, into Scotland as well. Mm. Um, but those southern features stayed with them for life then, didn't they? That's right, yeah. And I know there was later modifications to fit water scoops. Allowing, yeah, our models here have got water scoops and the flues vents in the top as well on the that, roof. That allowed the locomotives to pick up from water troughs to feed the steam heat boilers. Although by all accounts, the boilers weren't particularly effective. Not great. Um, because the locomotives were put onto freight duties a lot of the time in the in winter, winter months, cold months so yeah. uh, they were ineffective at heating trains so they were relegated to freight duties but a bit like the radiator in my office <laughs> <laughs> did provide valuable information for for br and its engineers as to the capabilities of diesels on freight trains so actually mm. um it was it was a good thing for it's it a good to learning happen. curve yes exactly yeah. um by the end of the 50s these pair of prototypes were unique 
to all of the other uh, locomotives being built by BR at mm. the time. They're out shopping class 40s, um, from which they they learnt a lot on the twins. But they were, were two yeah. unique locomotives which needed unique maintenance, unique parts. Mm. Uh, so they fell out of favour, having provided the engineers with all that information yeah. and knowledge and experience. And by 1963, 10,000 had been withdrawn. Yeah. And uh, luckily, 10,001 managed in another three years. So 1966, uh, we saw 10,001 finally withdrawn. Mm. And sadly, neither were preserved. No, and 10,001 only kept going because I believe it was, it was, they used spares from 10,000 to keep it going. Um, and they were both mothballed and then eventually cut up yes. unfortunately after there were some attempts to to save them but um unfortunately it never happened the good news is there's a group of people trying to build a replica of 10,000 so hopefully in the coming years we'll be able to see for ourselves what the real I keep thing keep seeing their updates on facebook i hope they're doing doing very well when they get there so can you tell us a bit about the models themselves dave i certainly can yes well we've got our first five announcements here today first releases of this new tooling uh, we have LMS 10,000 and 10,001 in their as-built livery, as-built guys, which are stunning. I love the black and silver, the lovely model. Certainly is a striking livery to apply to the prototypes. Made them stand out, I'm sure, it amongst did. the steam yeah. fleet. Yeah, and there's a, a rake of crimson and cream coaches behind it. Oh, look, yeah. They all look fabulous. Uh, and then we have the later um, Lakecrest uh, BR locomotive green livery with the cream roofs, which are also very nice. And then... LMS 10001, unfortunately, at the end of its days, um, we haven't bought in the, the small yellow panel, which is the only one of the two to have got that. So we've got the full, the full length and history of the, the models here from, from birth to death, so to speak. And how about the technical specification, Dave? What's inside the models? Well, they're driven by a cordless motor with twin flywheels, factory fitted with a uh, speaker, uh, and every item is available in both standard and sound fitted. The sound fitted models come with a Zemo Next 18 sound decoder. Um, That's pre-fitted. Pre-fitted, yes, factory fitted. And can, speak up. People can use that on analog and DCC straight out of the box and get the sound effects, can't they? That's right, yes, yes. There's limited sound available on, on DC, but um, there's still a lot of very good sound effects there. That's great. Um, so for uh, lighting, uh, we have directional lighting and there are both freight and passenger modes available for analog users. Uh, there's a switch on the chassis underneath. They come with the lights set to passenger mode, but you can switch to freight mode lighting uh, if you prefer. Uh, for DCC users, uh, we've got um, cab lights uh, as well that you can turn on and off. Is there any more lighting options for DCC users? Can they, can they switch between passenger and freight as well? They can, yes. Yeah. So there's, there are extra options available with the switches using in combination with the decoder functions as well. So it gives you four lighting functions rather than two available on DC. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, they're very good. They're, they're a lovely model. There's a lot in them um, and they, they should go really well. I mean, all wheels are electrical pickup as well. So all six axles are, are got electrical pickups. And I think they're all driven, aren't they, as well? Every axle is yeah, driven. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so all driven and all got electrical pickup. Plenty of power with these models, whether you're running one or two. Yes, that's to, right. To uh, yeah. pull a, a nice authentic train. Mm. Great. That should do really well. Shall we take a look at these models in a bit more detail? We start at the beginning with this model of number 10,000 as it was outshopped in December 1947 in its black and silver colour scheme adorned with the large chrome letters LMS on each side. Towards the number 2 end, 10,000 sports body side steps on either side, a feature not present on its twin. As with all of the LMS twins, this model is available in standard or sound fitted format. Next we create our first pair by introducing number 10,001. Again, in as-built condition, decorated in black and silver, but unlike its older sibling, 10001 does not carry LMS markings, as its construction was completed by British Railways. With no body side steps to be seen, and sporting its original features, the eagle-eyed viewer may have noticed the engine room detail replicated through the body side windows. In 1953, the pair were moved to the southern region, and to make them compatible with the southern practice of using head codes to denote both train type and route, Two additional head code lights and lamp brackets were fitted. These additions stayed with the locomotives for life and are seen on our next model of 10,000, finished in BR lined green with cream roof. In partner to this is 10,001 and you will note that, like its twin, 10,001 has now been fitted with water scoops to allow water to be collected on the go, from troughs located between the rails. The orange and black lining applied to both Pioneers is very much reminiscent of the type used on BR lined green steam locomotives. 
Our final model for now depicts 10001 in later years, with the orange and black lining replaced by a single off-white band at waist height, and with the roof painted grey. Small yellow warning panels have been applied to the nose ends, and overhead warning flashes are carried, capturing 10001 in its final years in service. Now, Dave, I think that really is it for today. I hope so. I hope we'll have nothing left for the rest of the year. Oh, don't you worry. There's plenty to come. There certainly is. But new tooling for Double O and N Scale today. A lovely mix of new products. It's with great. our locomotives, carriages, and wagons to go with yeah. these new tooling announcements, um, and all arriving in shops in the next few months. It certainly is. Indeed, some will be arriving this month. And the best way to find out what is arriving every week is to join the Batman newsletter. You can click the link below to join up to that and you'll receive our newsletter every week and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more of our videos when we have more new announcements and please do like and share this video um, we'll be out and about at Model Rail Scotland next yeah and then we've got the London Festival of Railway Modelling we're looking forward to that yeah. along with Model World Live the new event at the NEC mm -hmm. so lots of places to see Batman over the next few months uh, we'll be at regional events as well so head to the Batman website to find out where we will be and as always, Dave, where can you buy our products? Uh, all our retailers across the country. Not from us, from the retailers. Find all of our retailers listed on our website at batman.co.uk. And until next time, Dave, it's been a pleasure to see you. Thank you for bringing along all this brand new tooling. Well, I hope we can come again with even more next quarter. We look forward to it. Until yeah. next time, thank you, goodbye.